The most important aspect of your combat bot is the ability to drive. If you can't move, you lose. Even just a couple of motors with wheels will do the trick. All you need is a basic platform that can drive around and you're ready to compete, even if it's just a basic rammer or wedge type. The tricky part is making your robot drivable. We could host an event for autonomous combat bots, but then we'd end up with an army of Terminator, Cylons, and Saints, and for some reason that doesn't seem like the best idea. So we rely on humans to control their destruction machines using something like this. This is a six-channel remote control transmitter, and this is the accompanying receiver that's been paired with it. Each channel results in a pulse width modulated signal on the receiver that we can measure using a microcontroller and use that information to control motors. The switches on this controller can be used to cut the throttle on one channel and limit steering on another. Not really useful in our combat bot, so I'll leave them disengaged for now. These transmitter receiver sets can be picked up from stores that sell RC gear, like Hobby King. For a basic rammer or wedge type, you really only need two channels, but if you want to add a weapon, three channels is the way to go. This is a controller meant for a helicopter or airplane, but it'll work for our demo. Notice that the left stick stays in place as it's designed to be used as a throttle, so we'll use the right stick. For now, let's just get one channel working. We want it so that when we push the stick forward, the robot drives forward, and when we push it backward, it drives backward. Note that this isn't a binary all or nothing type of control. We want the robot to move slowly if we move the stick a little bit, and quickly if we slam it all the way forward. You're also welcome to use one of the steering wheel and trigger type of remote controls, and you can find them in three and four channels as well to control your weapons. It really comes down to personal preference on how you want to steer your bot. But for now, let's see how to read PWM signals from the receiver. Look closely at the receiver, and you'll see it has a number of 0.1 inch headers to connect wires to. The general rule of thumb for these types of receivers is that the pins on the outside are ground, the pins in the middle are power, 5 volts in this case, and the inside pins are your signal lines. The battery lines are for connecting four AA batteries to give power to the receiver. That means a regulated 5 volts from an Arduino will work just fine. Notice that the signal pin on the battery port isn't really a signal. If you use a jumper wire to connect that pin to ground, you'll be able to pair the receiver with a different transmitter. We need up-down on the right stick to control the speed on our robot, so we'll use channel 2. To show you how this works, I've attached an oscilloscope probe to the channel 2 signal pin. I'm also giving the receiver 5 volts so that it will turn on and give us a signal. With the transmitter turned off, the signal pin remains at 0 volts. As soon as I turn on the transmitter, the receiver begins putting out a series of pulses at 3.3 volts. These pulses are spaced about 18 milliseconds apart. Now, as I move the stick forward and back, you can see the width of the pulse change. For these PWM types of receivers, the pulse width can vary between 1 and 2 milliseconds, or 1,000 and 2,000 microseconds. When the stick is pulled back, the pulse is near 1,000 microseconds, and when it's pushed forward, the pulse is close to 2,000 microseconds. That means when the right stick is idle and sitting in the middle, the pulse is about 1,500 microseconds. There are a few types of receivers out there that can also use pulse position or serial communication as their signal output, but we'll stick to the pulse width modulation type for now. Let's connect this to an Arduino and see how to control some motors. Here, I've connected a 5 volt Arduino Pro Mini to a TB6612 FNG motor driver, which can control up to two DC motors. Raw power is provided by a two cell LiPo battery. I'll use a smaller 1000 milliamp hour pack to keep weight down in my bot. The raw voltage goes into the Arduino V-in as well as to the motor driver to provide more power to the motors. I'm also using two of the metal micro gear motors, which are light and powerful, perfect for plastic ants. I recommend something around 460 RPM, or a 50 to 1 gear ratio for beginners. It's a bit slower, so it's easier to control. Once you're comfortable driving the slower bot, you can upgrade to faster gear motors, say 900 RPM or a 30 to 1 gear ratio. The faster bot will allow you to maneuver around the course and your opponents better, but they're a little trickier to steer. 
I'm going to connect the Arduino's regulated 5 volts, labeled VCC, to any plus pin on the receiver, and ground on my circuit to the minus pin on the receiver. This will provide the receiver with the necessary power to operate. Then, I'm going to connect the channel 2 signal pin to pin 11 on the Arduino. The idea is that when I move the right stick forward and back on my controller, it sends a wireless signal to the receiver. The receiver interprets that signal and translates it to a repeating pulse whose width changes depending on the position of the stick. We'll use the pulse in function in Arduino to measure the width of that pulse and convert it into another PWM signal that's used to control the motors. Here, we've got the channel 2 signal pin connected to pin 11. We set up serial for debugging, and in loop, we use the pulse in function to measure the width of the high pulse on the signal line. Note that we set the timeout to be 25,000 microseconds, or 25 milliseconds. We then print out the measured pulse width and wait for a few milliseconds before taking another sample. Upload this and open a serial monitor. If my transmitter is off or not connected, the pulse width will be zero. As soon as I connect the transmitter, you should see that the pulse width is about 1500 microseconds. When I pull back on the stick, it changes to around 1100 microseconds, and pushing it forward changes it to about 1800. Back in the code, I've added a pulse to PWM function that accepts a measured pulse from the receiver and turns it into a PWM value between negative 255 and positive 255. To do that, we first check if the pulse is above 1000. Otherwise, we set it to zero to stop the robot. We use the map function to linearly map our pulse number from between 1000 and 2000 to negative 500 and positive 500. In reality, all you'd need to do is subtract 1500 from the pulse number, but this is a good example of how map works. Then, we use the constrain function to turn any number lower than negative 255 into negative 255, and any number greater than positive 255 into positive 255. The reason we don't just map directly from the pulse to negative 255 to positive 255 is because even though the receiver specs say that the pulse will be between 1000 and 2000, it's often not. And this provides a little bit of slop when the stick is near full forward or full backward. We also add a dead zone so that when the stick is anywhere near the center, we tell the motors to stop moving. Here, we defined the dead zone as 20 at the top of our program. We then return our newly calculated PWM value. For now, let's just print it out. When we run this program, we see 0 when the stick is idle, 255 when it's pushed forward, and negative 255 when it's pulled back. At this point, we can add our motor driver pins and set them all to be output. We make sure to write logic high to the standby pin to turn on the motor driver. I've added a drive function that accepts a speed and direction for motors A and B, which will correspond to the left and right motors. Just as a double check in the function, we make sure that the speeds are constrained to something between negative 255 and positive 255. We then set the direction pins on the motor driver depending on the sign of the speed. If it's zero, we set both to low to break the motors. If it's positive, we want the motors to spin in one direction, hopefully forward, and the other direction if it's negative. We do this for both motors, and then we set the speed of each motor by taking the absolute value of the arguments and passing them into analog write. For now, we just call the drive function with our calculated PWM value from channel 2 as the speed for both motors. All this code can be found in the description. Upload this to your Arduino. Once you've programmed the Arduino, remove the FTDI breakout and attach the LiPo battery. Now we can move the control stick to drive the robot back and forth. I know, you can buy an electronic speed control to do all this PWM and mixing for you, but that takes the fun out of learning how to use an RC receiver. This back and forth driving won't win you any combat matches, but it's a start. Next time, I'll show you how to mix a second channel to allow for steering. Good luck and happy hacking. How to mix a second channel to give you true, to give the back and forth steerings, not steering, steering goes that way, three and four channel types as well for stuff. Next time, I'll show you how to bix, bi doesn't seem like the best idea. So, re, 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 stuff happens. <laughs>